I call the meeting to order of the Planning Commission. It is July 8th. Um, please mute your cell phones if you have one that's on or anything like that. Um, we are all here except Russ, and maybe he will join us. And we have uh, Carol and Chad and Cheryl with us. So the first thing on um, our agenda is the consent agenda to approve the minutes, the financial re report, and we don't have any correspondence, correct? No correspondence. All right. So I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Second. All right, I have a move from uh, Terry to um, accept it, and David has seconded it. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Awesome, it passes. Okay, reports from the staff. Chad has just left the building, so that leaves it to you, Carol. Okay, I'll give it a break for a minute. Uh, there's two things I wanted to mention, and that is the Banta partition that you considered last month uh, has been appealed to the city council, and the appeal has a lot to do with the uh, road improvement on McCormick Gardens Road and the trail dedication. So the council is considering that appeal on the April, April, August 11th. Uh, they did extend the 120 days to allow, uh, the advantage extended the 120 days again uh, to get that covered. So I'll keep you posted on that. And the second thing I wanted to call your attention to is um, Bob Mori has filed a conditional use permit for a caretaker's residence at the school. And I, um, I ask you to limit your communications as you're ethically required to do now that it's been filed. And whenever an application has been submitted, this is when your ethical standards kick in. So. Uh, you can go see the site. You can't get together as a quorum and talk about it. Um, and you, if you go to the site or have any uh, ex parte contacts before the hearing, which will be August the 10th? Wait, I don't have a calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever the Thursday is, uh, then you can report those ex parte contacts at the hearing. When will we get a copy of the application? Uh, as always, you'll get it mailed by from Cheryl uh, by uh, Thursday or Friday, the week before the meeting. That's the wrong month, unless you turned it on. Okay. So, any, I think that's okay. it uh, for now. Any questions about anything else? Um, you you did note we did note in the minutes that at last meeting you said that the joint session was going to be July thirty first, but indeed you met August thirty first. And thank you. And I'm hoping everyone realized that that Carol gave the wrong date. What's the joint session? Uh, it's the uh, parks. I thought it was the twenty seventh. I think it's thirty. Yeah. Wait, I need a calendar. Uh, it's the thirty first. The joint uh, with uh, July 27th is with the small business committee oh. for us, and then you are August 31st. 31st. Yes. Yeah. That's and that's going to be that's a joint session. Presentation by on the parks master plan to both groups, so we can have you both here at the same time. August. Yeah. August. Second Thursday August. in August is 12. August 12 for the uh, Mori conditional use permit. August 29th as a special meeting date for you. Uh, it's the fifth Tuesday of the council, so they, that's when they have the work sessions. August 31st, not the 29th. Do not listen to Carol. No, she's talking about something different. No, she said August 29th. <laughs> I give up. That's a Sunday. I know. That would be hard. Okay. Anything else, Carol? I did better not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Okay. Uh, Chad, do you have anything? Just a few things. Uh, so 
I'll touch on the budget when uh, Ms. Cheryl talks about that as well, but uh, they have a building department uh, where we've got twice as many uh, plans in for single family dwellings uh, this year as compared to last year. And uh, so you probably all felt that and seen uh, what was going on with that. So we're up to about 20 so far this year and uh, we've got a bunch yet on the desk to be approved. So it keeps rolling. Uh, it seems like uh, rubber prices are starting to come down a little bit and that might even <coughs> give you a bit more action that way. Side so note, uh, Russ Taggart, I uh, message, uh, he's got a family thing, so he's requesting that uh, okay. he be excused. So moved. I have to ask you. He doesn't get to make a motion. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to say Code enforcement, we've been taking care of some noxious vegetation complaints and things. Those are going uh, well. We had some beach vehicle complaints that we took care of. Uh, staff administration, not important. Uh, vacation rentals. We did have two parking complaints in June, but they were promptly addressed, and those were the only complaints we got for short-term vacation rentals. Uh, Citizen Advisory Committee parts update. I uh, you know we're going to talk about that here soon. Uh, they are working on that and they are very organized. Uh, small business update, uh, they, we attended the June meeting, uh, there were some follow up calls to survey takers, so uh, they are down to three people, so we'll probably want to find somebody within the business community that would like to join that group. Uh, Highway 101 corridor project that we've been working on, uh, they've been doing some community outreach meetings with various people throughout the community that were assigned to that task. Next thing we're going to be doing here next week is meeting down at the uh, highway and doing a walkthrough with uh, some members of ODOT and the committee and uh, Chief Bowman. Uh, Ridge Path Construction, we've got some new material in, all the wood has been taken care of and we're going to be doing construction on that on Tuesday and Thursday of next week. We'll be putting up the columns for the, uh, the rails and the uh, start the decking process, so we're getting very close. Uh, Elk Collaborative, we've been, uh, just met with them again today. We approved the final draft of the Declaration of Cooperation, meaning tasks that Gearheart will go through to help uh, with the situation, whether it be alleviate or educate uh, or what have you. So those tasks will begin coming out. City Council will be planning for those uh, and that information will be made public once the ceremony for the uh, Declaration of Cooperation happens. Playground equipment, you know, the mayor was working hard on that. Uh, so the total funds raised so far is about 31000 uh, and Berkeley Sturgill, the young lady with the quarters, raised about 12300 And uh, we have three different quotes we're working through now to take a look at some opportunities. So the mayor is looking through those. And then uh, we'll start coming up with some ideas for a playground, which was kind of uh, elevated in regards to the uh, importance of getting things done. So even before the Parks Master Plan, there may be some playground uh, going in. That's all I've got for now. Um, yes, ma'am? Do you want to mention anything about a public hearing for that one? For the? Playground. Because parks, there's nothing in parks. Yeah, we talked, they just talked about that. That it's not a conditional use. Oh, no, not yet. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, well, I guess, yeah, I mean, even, even to put in any playground, equipment anywhere in your heart in any one of our parks it is still the conditional use so this will be an applicant the city of your heart and uh, and then we'll go through the planning commission so we'll see how that goes <laughs> i'm sure it will be fine <laughs> easy and thus they're going to live in it right thank you cheryl okay um thank you chad um chad i think you you indicated that cheryl had something a report i don't have anything else. treasurer's report we, we've you already done all that. Asked it. Well, I was paying attention to you. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. City budget is looking excellent coming into this new year. Uh, we have more cash carry forward than I think in the history of your heart. So uh, the staff and that has done a fantastic job. So um, the budget's looking good for the upcoming year, and we got some exciting projects budgeted for that, such as parks and that sort of thing. So uh, it'll be fun. Okay. All right. Thank you for your report. Uh, goals list. Do we have any? Corrections, additions, concerns? 
Uh, we have we updated it and talked extensively about the last meeting, and now the red is gone and it's kind of reflecting what we talked about. Is there any concern? Yes, sir. I just had a question. I was wondering if the um, parks planning people had been asked to add riparian protection standards by anybody, or because that was on our we put that as a goal. I didn't know no. how that was going to get communicated. Not at this point. Uh, you know, I think there was a discussion about that. The focus at the moment is on these parks themselves. Uh, and uh, a little bit about the beach, but they really have to tackle the dunes at this point. So uh, we'll have to check with the Parks Master Planning Committee and answer that. Uh, and no, not yet. That I know. Yeah, Carol? <laughs> um, if you look under. Um, the zoning and ordinance, zoning ordinance amendment considerations, the last item, consider adding riparian protection standards to the parks and open space zone P. And so that's there is a higher priority, it's a number two. And uh, the parks committee is right now in the midst of um, well, doing the, the really important work of the policy making and the project strategies and the, and the specific uh, plan action items that will be the important part of the, the parks plan and what we're going to do. And pretty sure, Austin, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I mentioned this, or at least I mentioned it to um, the chairman that we would add that as a policy statement um, in, in a draft. And in that way, the if it stays in the draft, which I don't, I don't imagine that it won't, uh, we would then be able to amend the comp plan at the same time we're amending it with the adding a parks master plan instead of in two separate actions. You see what I mean? I think we also, and what we just also decided was that we were going to focus on the city owned property within that zoning area, so not to be, um, you know, blanketed across everything in the dunes. So um, there was some language we discussed right after Carol left the last meeting where we just said we had some, like, a statement to say kind of the purpose of the vegetation buffer and, like, how that would play a role in, like, maintaining the, um, you know, the overall parks use for the residents and the habitat and the wildlife and the, you know, that use it. So, um, I don't know, we'll, we'll see it come up, I think, in the joint meeting. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, and I would also point out that I added something, but I didn't tell you. Again? Yeah. And it's under in process, this is not a big surprise, but uh, in process, the last item, number two priority, ongoing, I put the ODOT City Highway 101 Safety Improvement Plan in there just because it's a big deal, and it's planning, it's all planning, and uh, it's just something that we can keep track of, and it should be there because it's another task that's underway. Okay. Thank you, Carol. All right. Uh, the proof we done that visit do you have something else oh oh yes thank you thank you um so we need to have a motion to um excuse russ i'm, I'm sorry so moved so moved second okay i'm gonna let stephanie okay moved by terry and seconded by stephanie to excuse russ from the meeting tonight all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, aye. opposed? All right, there's no one there. All right, take care of that. Uh, visitors' comments. Oh, I forgot. Commissioners. I'm sorry, I missed that. Commissioner's report. Does anyone have anything to report as a commissioner? All right. Um, visitors' comments. Tom, do you have anything to say? I don't. He's the only one there, and RJ. And RJ is usually silent. Okay. I don't think so. All right, so we're going to move ahead to the public hearing. Um, when this is the public hearing 21 02 
CU, Speakman Conditional Use at 1368 Pacific Way. Um, I need, I will open the hearing on that. The first thing I have to do is read a disclosure statement. These people have heard me read it many, many times, but I still have to read it. Um, all persons testifying shall be deemed parties to the application and must provide their name and full mailing address if they wish to be notified of the decision, continuances, appeals, or other procedural actions required by the code. The city zoning code specifies applicable criteria to be relied upon in making a decision. Those criteria and findings of fact are in the city staff report. Public testimony should be limited to those criteria and findings of fact or to other city or state land use standards that the person testifying believes apply to the proposed land use action. Failure to raise an issue in person or in writing with sufficient detail to forward the hearing body and parties to the hearing an opportunity to respond to that issue precludes appeal to the city council or land use board of appeals or to seek damages in circuit court due to a condition of approval. Before the conclusion of the initial evidentiary hearing, any participant may ask the planning commission for an opportunity to present additional relevant evidence, arguments or testimony that is within the scope of the hearing. The hearing body shall grant the request by scheduling a date to finish the hearing, a continuance to time and date certain, or by leaving the record open for additional evidence, argument, or testimony pursuant to ORS 197.7636A through E. We need to ask the commissioners if they need to declare conflict of interest in ex parte contact or personal bias. No. Hearing none. Oh, yes, sir. I just wanted, it's not um, probably a conflict of interest, but I, I talked to the speakers before they even uh, applied for the application when they were thinking about buying the building. They were seeking some clarification on some of the zoning code and, and stuff like that, as well as John and who sold the property to. So I just wanted to make okay. that. No, that, that's good that you, you let us know. But it was that was before they put in an application or anything, yeah. correct? Yeah. All right. Um, I need to ask the audience that would be. You and Tom, yes. Uh, are there any challenges to the commission's ability to make an impartial decision? Okay, it's time for the staff report, Carol. Okay, uh, if everybody has had a chance to review it, I hope, because I, I kind of whizzed through this uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page. This is an application for a new building at 
and the applicant anticipates the business will be open to the public three to five days a week, usually including the weekends, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, the project was sent around to all the city departments and there were no objections raised. The property is on C2 and uh, the city finds that the C2 zone also uh, allows outright or conditional uses that are allowed in the C1 zone. C1 zone thereby allows an arts and crafts gallery and a studio outright as a conditional use, which is why it's before you, uh, and a residence in conjunction with the permitted use where the residential use does not exceed 50% of the building's floor area. So they're asking for that conditional use card for the residence, which we've never uh, this will be our first uh, use of that new policy that was adopted by the city last December for the C1 zone. Uh, other zoning aspects, well, the tsunami hazard overlay zone, uh, of course, covers most of Gearhart, and this would be an area, but um, what we know clearly is it doesn't fall into the limitations uh, of that zone because of the, it doesn't have the density, it's not a medical facility, it's not a large group facility, uh, there's not a lot of public assembly going on here, it's just a single family residence being added to an existing business, so. Uh, but just to get practice using that tsunami overlay zone, I thought I would point that out to you. Uh, in addition, the transportation improvements and access management standards of our code uh, apply to a new single family dwelling if it fronts on a street that is planned for a sidewalk or a trail. In the Gearhart TSP, uh, unless the city manager waives or defers or requires a fee in lieu of uh, improvements at this time. And so the subject property does have 115 feet of frontage on Pacific Way. Pacific Way is a collector street, which means it's a you know more than a local street, so slightly major for Gearhart, relative to Gearhart. And there is a 60-foot right-of-way there already, uh, which means there's no additional right-of-way needed to be dedicated. Uh, the street is planned to include a curb and a five-foot sidewalk on each side of a shared use or a shared use path on one side. Uh, we don't have a specific detailed street improvement plan for Pacific Way. The TSP doesn't go that far, um, but we're able to, um, I think, at this point and during these development proposals, um, you know, try and apply as best we can what makes sense there, in, 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 at least for now, and then thinking of the future plan for that street. Uh, as, as you make those decisions. So we know there's no sidewalk, there's no curb, there's no planting or parking strip, there's no landscape drainage buffer, which are planned for Pacific Way, but there is the right of way. And uh, so the city, uh, we think the best solution is to determine what type of improvement would be feasible um, at this time, based on the existing conditions and associated with this permit. And uh, without, even though, okay, so a walkway of natural material across the parcel's frontage, nat natural material being not a curb and a sidewalk to nowhere on such a short section, uh, which might become more of a hazard than anything, but just to uh, begin the process of illustrating how we need, we should have a walkway of Pacific Way and that we can start out with just a natural um, trail kind of thing. So, like this is so common in your art, you walk on the edge of the pavement. And, but you know, something, a place is specified. And so that's, that's what the conditions at the end suggested uh, do. At the same time, a waiver remonstrance agreement for a full street upgrade to Pacific Way uh, should be standard practice in the future if 
a local improvement in district is ever formed uh, by the other property owners on the street to upgrade the street to a different level than you have now. Okay, um, other things that apply to this would be parking. Uh, the gallery is a similar use to the ironworks business. The modified gallery of um, 700 square feet requires three spaces and the residence requires uh, two spaces and there are two spaces shown in the drawing in the garage for the residents. Um, so that would, would meet the standard. And there are three spaces in the existing driveway. Now, when you review a conditional use permit. Uh, qu uh, question, Carol? Question, Carol? Yeah. Um, in terms of parking, the three required, is one of those required to be handicapped? Uh, yes, and I believe their plan shows it as such, the one that's in front of the garage. Handicap parking, uh, con the concrete slab there. Can you can see it. You can see it. Okay. 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 I'm good. Yeah. yeah, so just to remind you, when you re consider a conditional use permit, you have certain criteria by which you need to find that this proposal satisfies and I'm not going through all this because there's always a lot of redundancy in these findings uh, and especially when you're trying to compare the proposal to the all the possibly relevant comprehensive plan policies but um, you know there's affordable housing is its goal city to ensure decent affordable housing is provided for all residents and we find the city uh, uh, a commercial policy was adopted by the city in 2020 to permit housing within 50% of the floor area of C1 and C2 zone business as a method to encourage affordable workforce housing options for Gearheart residents and businesses. And uh, the proposal modifies an existing building incorporating a dwelling in, in just half that amount of space and it does provide them uh, some housing options that, that there is not much of at this time. And this is the first use of that new policy. Uh, we'd also find that, um, I think I just said that, is, well, at the same time, it's preserving the predominantly residential character of Gearheart, admittedly, it's just one residence, but you know, you're, that, that's consistent, the residence is consistent with that policy too. Um, the amount of land devoted to commercial use uh, shall be compatible with Gearhart's residential character. And so the amount of land in this case will not change. The same amount of land, and actually it shrinks a little bit by putting a residence in it. So that is certainly consistent with that policy. Are we uh, becoming a, to avoid becoming a tourist destination to achieve this policy through our land use regulations only allow a limited a level of tourist development and we find that the existing building footprint actually decreases rather than increases the amount of commercial space. And I'm going to start speeding up because of the redundancy here, but uh, the interior model will reduce the amount of commercial space, which is said, which then might create new commercial impacts on the adjoining residential area, protecting residential areas from adjacent commercial development. Um, it will allow the owner to walk rather than drive to work, and you know it's a cost in decrease in uh, trips generated and potentially air pollution. Minor indeed, but uh, it does do that. So there's another positive. Uh, is how does it meet our energy goals? Well, it's a reuse of an existing building for an opportunity that will provide a workplace and a residence to help ensure a stable and healthy economy uh, by using an existing space. The city finds the residence within a business can be considered a medium density housing um, option. It's a half a block from Highway 101, it's a, which is a high capacity corridor, so you're putting a work live occupancy uh, use in this higher capacity corridor, by thereby reducing traffic by the business owner. Um, and 
the transportation rules, um, we find that the condition from a day out of 10 will maintain existing traffic functionality um, with really little impact. So in all above, the above findings indicate that residents in a commercial space is compliant with several plan policies and the intent of the C2 zone. Addition, addition of a single dwelling will, will decrease, not increase daily traffic trips. The workshop will not create parking problems, odors, or noise in the area. Limited size of space and the limited hours of operation would provide some assurance the use will maintain compatibility with both commercial and residential uses in the neighborhood. And 26% of, of the building being used provides a good housing option. Uh, so that's the whole one criteria is does this proposal comply with the comprehensive plan and I can't find any way that it doesn't. Second criteria has to do with is there a demand and we would say there's obviously a demand because the applicant is requesting this um, and we do know there's a demand for affordable housing and that the, um, the prior use and this use are quite similar. So adding a living space will, um, you know, not affect the surrounding properties in any negative way and actually could be positive. Um, the facilities and services are all there. The site and landscaping are attractive. It's well maintained. Uh, they have the extra land for the residential uh, septic that needs to be incorporated and there's no really no topography or soil conditions that are affected in any way negatively by the modifications uh, the i'm just moving right on now because i think everything else this is like um like one of the most positive land use applications i think i've ever had the privilege of working on in so many ways um it just is if you had a chance to go look at the building it's a it's a perfect uh perfectly suited use uh to put the residence and gallery together in a very attractive mm -hmm. space um and it's, it's really a win-win for everybody you have uh, three uh options for your decision you can approve it with conditions which I'll mention. You can continue this to a later date or you can deny it with some findings that are not positive like the ones I just proposed. Staff recommends you approve it. Um, there's no more than 50% of the total floor area. It meets all the criteria uh, with the conditions listed on page 11. That's the only one. Yeah. And those are a prior to issuance of an occupancy permit, permit if feasible, as determined by the city staff. And I, I think you can entrust us to figure this out how to do it best. A uh, five foot wide walkway shall be constructed in the Pacific Way frontage. It's 115 feet in accordance with specifications uh, established by the city. And this may either be a natural surface or a hard surface as determined most practical. Uh, in addition, a waiver of remonstrance for the owner to participate in future street improvement to Pacific Way uh, if that comes to fruition and that would be executed uh, between the city and the applicant. Number two is that they file for a sign permit. There's no discussion of signage yet, but that's something the city will deal with. Number three, if the applicant is encouraged to provide a bicycle rack in the entry area, but I don't think we could mandate it, uh, it wouldn't hurt. might actually attract a bicycle rider and instead of a car. Uh, and then, you know, prior to occupancy, they will have to provide the DEQ County, Classic County Health Department uh, approval for the new restroom. So that's the end of my report. I'm happy to answer any questions. Do we have any questions for Carol at this time? Okay. I, I do. Oh, uh, David has a question for you. I have two questions. One, there's no mention of employees with the business. 
Can you expand on that at all? Are you asking um, Carol? Let the applicant do that yeah, when yeah. Okay. Do the we'll, presentation, but we'll I don't think that. there are any employees. Is there anything about her report? Um, no. No. There okay. All right. All right. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Carol. Carol's good. Uh, Carol's good. Okay. So what we'll do is you will do your presentation, then we'll ask for anyone that a proponent of it, but again, we don't have people, or opponents, or any neutral comments, and then if there's anything that, if someone does come and say something, for instance, um, uh, you can rebut it, and then um, we'll close the public hearing, we'll have a discussion amongst ourselves. We may have questions for you specifically, okay? okay. So it is now your time. So identify yourself, please, for the recording, so we Okay, I'm Cummins Speakman, otherwise known as Jay Speakman. Legal name is Cummins Speakman, 201 South Cottage Avenue in Deerhart. Um, I'm happy to be here with my daughter Rachel, who was born at 201 Cottage Avenue some years ago. And we're uh, grateful for your time and consideration. The reason that uh, how we got here really is uh, pretty much spelled out in my cover letter in my application, but um, as Austin mentioned, there were a lot of other sort of tentacles to this uh, process where we had to act fairly quickly. Um, and I got as much information as I could ahead of time and basically just rolled the dice on this because uh, there was a clamoring that was going on for this site and I had just entered into the process of looking for a house, a uh, residence for Rachel. Now that she's here, she's been at school in Chicago for five years and has returned. And uh, as everyone knows, there's been a kind of a stampede. And after looking at the price of residences and the inflation that was going on, I, I decided because the simple fact that She's now renting a studio in Cannon Beach and a house in Seaside. The, the total rent uh, together is pretty significant. And so I started looking at commercial property and uh, found that this was available. I knew about the building. And so uh, I was immediately struck by the fact that I hadn't really connected these dots, and I thought, well, if we can get this conditional use approved, it makes nothing but sense to me because for a, a significantly reduced amount of investment, uh, even including the build-out, um, I felt that we were going to get a lot more in the long run and that she would have a place to work, I would have a place to work, uh, and other people in the future, other artisans may also have a place to work. And I can't stress enough how important it is to us because uh, my whole family are artists. I'm a trained metalsmith. Um, my wife is a painter, a very prolific and successful painter. We have a gallery in Cannon Beach. We've been there for 13 years. And uh, it's a pretty um, active business. So. One aspect of this uh, purchase was to procure another location here in Deerhart, which was basically a return for us because we had a shop uh, in the old 3M or uh, Judith M building at the corner of Pacific Way, and so basically just catty corner to this property for five years, uh, which we vacated uh, about. 10 years ago. And uh, so we feel that we would be able to use the showroom as a gallery for all, all of us, all of our art. Um, and I can have Rachel speak to that because she'll be the primary artist there. So um, we're here to appeal to you for your, your good judgment. And, and I think it's fairly clear that Carol has laid this out in a way that um, really speaks to all of the points that, that I brought up in my cover letter, which um, I think makes nothing but good sense because there is a serious lack of these type of opportunities for affordable housing and for artisans. And I think it's 
uh, it would add a cultural uh, component to the community, which is uh, quickly going away, <laughs> as we see a lot of these houses, older houses especially, being torn down and rebuilt, and uh, working people are kind of getting pushed out a little bit. And I think it's important to try and keep that in mind as you consider this decision. So thanks for your time, and uh, I'll answer any questions, and uh, we can get down into the, the weeds if you'd like. On, on Does your daughter want to say anything? Did you want to speak, or has he spoken for you? He pretty much covered he's, it. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's covered it, great. Yeah. So I do have a question for you. There are four conditions here that Carol laid out in her report. The, the some kind of walkway or some something in front of uh, on Pacific Way and the um, waiver of remonstrance and the sign permit, which is just kind of, you're going to have to do that anyway. Um, a possible bike rack, which we laughed at, but people do ride bikes. And the septic system approval. Do you have any problems with any of those? No. Any objections to it? I guess that's what I'm really asking. No, I'm, I'm not in a position to object, but I, I don't really know the conditions or the the uh, the minutia of, of some of these things. I, a bike rack is a, is a positive. That's easy. I ride my bike almost every day. I will be riding it over to across the highway from our house. Um, Rachel rides a bike. So that's a definite, um, that's easy. Um, and I think uh, the one thing that I am not clear about is the path, but uh, I think that's totally doable. The only thing that I might bring up is, that if I might just point out on this on this map um, or this aerial view, if you come off of uh, 101 right here on this property, the Brassard property, this is a, a large grove of ponderosa pine. There are about six of them, and I don't know. I'd say they're probably 30 to 40 years old, um, three foot in diameter trunks. They're on city property. And on our property is a large maple, which is multi-trunk, uh, really a large maple, right in the right of way. And that could be a problem if we are asked to provide a path. It's going to have to either go around it or the tree has to be removed. So without knowing all the details of exactly where that line comes through, uh, I can't really say what, whether that's going to be a problem. But uh, I certainly would agree to anything that is required. Those, those kinds of issues would be worked out with the city. Yeah. Because the city doesn't want to see any trees disappear. So I'm, I'm sure that the city manager would be able to work with you, right? Yes, ma'am. OK. OK. So I just wanted to see how we were on those conditions. Yeah. You had some questions, David? Are you I sure? do. And one just came up as you're talking about the, the giant maple. Could you take some inspiration from the drive through Redwoods in <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, talk, I'm not talking drive through, but ride your bike through. Uh, the other questions I had was uh, there's no mention of employees. Are those, is that planned or accounted for in any way? Part of the purpose of having me live there is that I would be running the gallery space and working there. Um, so it reduces the need for workers to come to the space um, but I mean there may be one other employee per I'm just trying to anticipate when you've got some heavy right. heavy work to do that you may not be qualified to work with machinery or equipment for your own safety I'm just curious about right. that if you would need to bring somebody on a regular basis or not I doubt it. Not for the not, not for the sort of work that we're going to be doing. I, mean, I think um, that I think that would be adjusted by your uh, your uh, your occupancy permit and your uh, city building uh, your city uh, city licensing. Uh, oh, so wait, during construction? Is that what you're? No, during oh. operation of your business because uh, you'll be uh, paying tax based on yourself and how many employees you. In the business, mm -hmm. so I think the city will take care of that. And the, other, the next question I had was the septic tank in the driveway. Um, is that good? To, has that been shown to stand up to vehicle traffic? I 
been trying to have um, a meeting with the uh, excavator. It's a very busy time of year. He's, Who, Keith? he's Keith. Yeah, he's he's pretty taken up, I guess, at this point. But he's we've been texting, and his answers are very short. Like, got it. Uh, will do. Uh, you know. <laughs> Okay, you know, so I, I haven't really been able to get him over there, but I, I think if this passes, first thing I'm going to do is say, okay, Keith, let's meet down there because I have now been approved and I want to go ahead with the septic system improvement. I've already talked to his man, uh, George? Or? George. Yeah. George is very knowledgeable about setbacks, slope, all of that stuff. This will be, as proposed, we already have a bid, I have it here. Uh, for a bottomless sand filter of 360 square feet, which is the minimum, and a 1,500-gallon buried tank, two-chamber, and a dosing system, which some of you are probably familiar with. Uh, the location of the tank may very well be where it now sits. It would have to be a tank that's deep enough and also heavy enough to sustain, you know, vehicle traffic. But it's uh, hard to find a place to put a tank where there is enough slope to be able to drain to it because the entire building is on a slab now uh, with an outfall under the slab so we kind of have to work with what's there and it, do it does come out uh, right in that corner of that L. And so I think that's probably what we're going to try and do, short of cutting uh, a big slot through that. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sure you guys will figure out something smart to address that. Yeah. I was just kind of concerned that I'm always worried about vehicles on top of septic systems, whether it's the tanks or the lines or the drainage or the drain field. Mm -hmm. I'm just always concerned about that because uh, it tends to shorten the life. And I've had a lot of projects of my own just evaporated go away because they didn't pay attention to driving on their septic system. Well, what I would say in answer to that is that for 23 years that that tank has been there, uh, he's had tractor trailers back into that with steel from Portland numerous times. That's the supply uh, door into the ironworks. And, uh, and it will remain so, I'm sure. Yeah, and we're not be, we're not proposing doing iron work on a large scale. If we do it, would be on a fairly small scale. But nevertheless, uh, you have to address that. If we sold the building to somebody that wanted to turn it back into an ironworks or or a concrete uh, cutting facility, then you'd have some heavy traffic over the top of that tank. But I'm going to leave that up to uh, Keith because that's I, I'm not really familiar with the codes and. Um, if we can avoid it, we will. That's a good direction to take. The next question I have was about emergency access to the residents, uh, firefighters, or medical technicians uh, to um, around to the to the east and north side of the building of the residence area. Would they be? Uh, yeah, the, if you see the, the, the actual, I, I haven't shown the entire building uh, with entrances. Let's see, there is a drawing. I'm not so much yeah. worried about the entire building, but, but the residential. Well, part. it would be what I'm getting at is it would be through these two doors, which are shown as uh, residence parking, uh, into the workroom, and then there will be an entrance which I haven't shown from the workroom into the residence. So that's access from the driveway. There's also an entrance to the showroom, which would provide a second entrance into the residence, which would be a fire door. And there's a third door right in the corner on this southeast corner uh, that is shown in uh, the proposed plan that's on graph paper. That's a third entrance to the outside from the residence. So there are three actual entrances to, to the residence. Mm -hmm. And that, those are already there, and we're not going to change that. But they, 
uh, Mark Brian has told me that he's going to require fire doors if we replace them and we intend to. Which is rated doors with closers. So my, my question really stems from what if there's a fire in the kitchen, which is kind of a central area in the residence, and if it spread beyond the kitchen, it would probably make the, the hallway between the showroom inaccessible. It might make the access to the living room inaccessible to the kitchen if there's a fire in the kitchen. So I'm sure the fire marshal or the building official will look at that and make sure that you've got a backup exit from a sleeping area. And the last question coming ahead was about, uh, uh, I'm sure your building permit will establish safe conditions for constructing a residence adjacent to a workshop. There will need to be a fire separation between the residence and the workshop area. And that will be part of the building permit review. Yeah. So those were the two criteria that Mark laid out for me when, when I met with him down there. One was the fire doors between public spaces and the residence. And I would assume also between, because the work area could be considered a public space and the residence. And so that's three fire doors that we're going to be required to uh, install. The, the exterior door, it's my impression, it will not have to be a fire rated door. The exterior door to the outdoors doesn't share a space, a common space. So Probably that would just be a, a normal exterior door. I would have, you wouldn't have double check with commercial construction requirements. Yeah. Well, we're it's working with uh, Vito Sorelli is being retained as an architect and knows these codes pretty well. And he has assured me that we're, uh, he's going to meet with me Tuesday. Um, and he will be basically calling shots on the actual drawings and okay. sort of maintaining the, you know, compliance. That sounds pretty comprehensive. He also, the second thing that he requires is a sprinkler system. Just to assure you that, you know, if escape is not handy, there will be a sprinkler system because that's required. That will pay for itself on your insurance savings. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it costs, it does, it's not as expensive as it used to be, but you will get a discount on your fire insurance, and so it will eventually pay for itself. Yeah. So those are the two things that he... And they both deal with fire and safety, life safety issues, and he's made it clear that those are the two criteria that he's going to hold us to. So uh, uh, we have agreed to comply with all existing codes. It's especially relevant these days with what's going on in Florida and people thinking that you know they're living in this concrete structure that's going to survive the Holocaust. Nuclear Holocaust, but you know, things happen. So, I'll go ahead. are there any? Yes, Terry. No, Sharon, you have a question for us? Ask it. <laughs> um, it's for you, Rachel. Uh, you're gonna have a kiln in, is it inside? Is it a kiln inside? Yeah, it's in the furthest north. West corner of the building. Okay. Um, and it is it's kiln it's it's kiln it's brick kiln brick and it's in the it's contained and they're designed to contain fire so they're really safe things and then we have we have a firewall um, on both sides or a heat wall. Okay. And is it is the kiln? I'm sorry for my ignorance. Yeah. Is the kiln vented to the outside? Yes, or it is. It is. Yeah. And are there environmental? Um, precautions or rules that you have to follow for what's being vented out or I don't I'm sorry I don't yeah. know. Well like I mean just there's air quality standards that are set in place by you know the government um, but those are pretty liberal considering that if I fire glazes um, of the color that that would be the only um, toxic gas that would be coming out of that. Mm -hmm. um, it's in very small quantities, and I don't, in my work, I personally don't use that because I'm very mindful of that. Okay. Um, but yes, that is a good question. 
So, okay. yeah. But I can also provide more information on that if that is a concern to anybody. Yeah. Well, I was just curious about it because I don't yeah. know that much about yeah. these things. And I didn't know if the DEQ got involved in that or how that. No, not particularly. Because um, the glass blowing studio put off gases mm -hmm. as well. Um, yeah, but yeah I, don't, I don't know what he had to go through safety standard wise or anything like that or environmentally. Um, so, yeah. Typically, these kinds of equipment are certified in order to be legally installed. And without the certification, uh, a contractor could be in trouble to install it, something okay. like that. Well, they have a built-in filter system already. Yeah. yeah. In the kiln itself. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, I was just curious. I didn't. Okay. Thanks. Any questions from either of you? Okay. We have so bored everyone that was listening to us that they've all left, right? So, uh, no. Is someone there? Do we have any? I need to ask the proponents if there's anyone out there. Is there anyone out there? Yeah, we have. Oh. Uh, RJ. 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 And RJ's probably doing it for the newspaper. He's in the truck. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I don't think I have any proponents. And I don't think I have any opponents. I don't think I have any neutral comments. And uh, the applicant didn't, doesn't have anything to rebut. So I will close the public hearing. Um, this is a time for commission discussion. Is there any discussion? Yes, Mr. Graff. I think it's a fabulous program. It fits in with what we talked about, having somebody live in a space and work in a space. and. It just shows what we did was really a good idea, and I move to accept it with the conditions, or approve it with the con four conditions. So second. Okay, so I have a, a motion. Pardon? I, I know, I know. Can I make a comment first? No, I have to, I have to quiet him first. <laughs> No, I, I first have to say, I have a motion by Commissioner Graff, but the second by Mr. Tomlinson to approve the, uh, the conditional, use. with, with conditional uses. Yes, now we have discussion. Do you want to say something, Stephanie? I do want to say something. I really appreciate your cover letter and the ease of reading all of your drawings. I think this is the most complete, easy to process application we've ever had, at least during my time, which hasn't been as long as many others. Um, thank you very much for all the detail. Okay. Did well, you can thank uh, the city planner for helping me to make a decent proposal because I was told just keep it simple and readable. And so I guess I achieved that. You certainly did. You did yeah, well. My husband is an artist and a photographer. And we've been in that building many, many times. And this is a fabulous idea. Thank you. And did you want to say something? Um, I guess my only other question about a conditional use is, does that conditional use travel with the property to the transfer's title? Yes, the, uh, and I, Carol, you could probably answer that better, but I believe the conditional use stays with the property. So if you sell that yeah. property, people can move in there. Yeah, the only other way the only other way I've seen that work is that a uh, one of the conditions that you can put on there is that it expires after a period of time and they have to reapply. But uh, in this case that hasn't been one of the conditions. So it would stay with that property in perpetuity. Until they went either an occupancy change or a business type change. Yeah. Okay. That's the key. And unless there's an occupancy change, the the use is there until it changes. <laughs> and so what is the definition of the occupancy as proposed? C2? Yeah. 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 So if it becomes anything other than C2, which could include C1. It, it doesn't. It's really triggered by a business license. I think the city has a business license. Mm -hmm. uh, right. If there were somebody who wanted to change the business, the city they usually come to the city first, and uh, we would evaluate that use that's being proposed, just like you 
used to be ironworks. Now we've got another use that's this use. Uh, the future is unknown, but there will be another use someday. And it's just a matter of the new applicant initiating my new use through the city. And the C2 zone does have the most opportunity for different types of businesses within your heart and uh, conditional uses. So if a future owner could wanted to convert the whole building into residential use, that would be a total occupational change. That no, that's only 50%. That's what we're proving. The conditional uses of that. In the C2. In the C2. Well, mm -hmm. NC1 too. NC1. Yeah. And so what if they wanted to apply for an R zoning? It would be a zone change. It would be a zone change, completely different. It would be a zone change. Yeah. And okay. Okay. I just wanted to get it in here. Okay. All right. So, no further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those say nay. There are no nays, as unanimous, and I think that we all pretty much thought. Hey, we did good on the C1, so I'll make it 50% occupancy because here you go. And we had some questions and interesting questions for you today that maybe as we thought about having a, a, a living space in a working space that I, I want to not thought about all those things like firewalls and things like that. So thank you. You, you now have our permission. Um, thank you. Okay. Any, any concerns of the commission? Um, I almost have a little bit of time now. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to go home yet. Okay. I do. I do. <laughs> I, not, I vote that we excuse Terry. <laughs> do you have anything? I, I, have I move we adjourn. No. <laughs> Meeting is adjourned at 7.02. Wow. Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. Thank do you, you have a name? Me? Good night, Carol. Oh, I was like Rachel. Um, for the business speech.